doing that? Where do their graduates go? And it's a great way to get them looking into, does it require the GRE or the GMAT or some other form of you know, antecedent? And so we're all doing our own little personal investigation as an assignment in here. But I always love to bring you in. Oh. And so this is probably the third or fourth year we've done it every fall and spring. And uh, we give our students a chance to hear specifically about the great things we're doing in our grad school as our grad school has um, been established. I don't know, you, you may not know this, but I helped originally start the grad school in 2006, 2007, when Sam Isgit was charged with the responsibility of developing the grad school. Uh, he had uh, us in the business school develop the MBA. So Ed Sherbert and myself and Gary Fellers and Ralph Johnson uh, were the four core individuals that, that really built the, the MBA and then wrote up the first Sachs thing and, and basically did it for Sam to kind of get that started. And then I would go down and those first couple of cohorts and talk <coughs> classes and then we did, I used to do the APA stuff for the entire grad school. So I would come down to, to several of the classes and go in and, and help them as we were kind of getting those first classes off the ground. But, I've watched our grad school grow and blossom and obviously acquire campus and just really formalize as a, as a really healthy entity, self-sustaining. So I uh, look forward to it. Let me open in prayer and then we want to give uh, Maria quality time. So let's go to the Lord together, please. So Father God, thank you for bringing us together today. And just pray, uh, Lord, that you'll bless us with uh, healthy wisdom and knowledge and information. Speak mightily through uh, Maria and give her knowledge and wisdom to share lord in our delight of our ngu grad school and understanding the graduate experience in graduate education pray for those who aren't here bring them safely and keep us all healthy lord jesus we love you in your name we pray father amen this is maria Kepler. good morning hope you guys are doing well today and um We'll go ahead and jump right in. Let me make sure I put my marker. I do to write a lot, so <laughs> and talk a lot too. But um, I'm Maria Kithcart, the director of admissions for the MGU Online and Graduate School programs at North Greenville University. And um, it's interesting. I always enjoy having an opportunity to share a little bit about what we do here at the university. Um, sometimes. <clears throat> in working with your four-year degree and trying to finish up and meet all those requirements so you can graduate. Um, <laughs> grad school may or may not be at the forefront of your mind, so but you have an opportunity to have a class where you can kind of examine and grapple with the thoughts, uh, the process of going to graduate school and why it's so important. So today, we'll kind of start off a little bit with uh, the graduate school that exists here at North Granville University and talk about some degree updates because we actually have some new graduate degrees that are aligned with the business disciplines here that I think that you'll find to be of great interest. In the past, we've offered the MBA, <clears throat> which is considered to be kind of the um, gold standard, if you will, for organizations, but we have some offerings that kind of complement that, I think, and I think um, depending upon where your strengths lie as a student, you may find that one program is a better fit than a, a different one. So we'll talk about the degree updates that are very exciting to share. And then also about the admissions process, what's involved in that. And of course you're guided through that process. If you remember what that was like for you as a traditional student, hopefully there was a bit of hand holding and um, <clears throat> I guess shepherding through that process and um, and we take that process with our students very seriously we want to make sure that you have all the information you need that you are guided through the admissions process um, sometimes especially if you're applying to multiple schools it can get a little overwhelming but we're here to help you through that and uh, don't want it to be an overwhelming process for you we'll talk a little bit about financial aid and some options and then hopefully I'll cover all the bases, but if not, we certainly have time for our Q&A. All right, to tell you a little bit about North Greenville's Graduate School, uh, if you're familiar with the area of Greer, if you've been there very much, or maybe not much at all, we have a campus that's about 25 minutes from here. And uh, I always love having the drive from Greer to Tigerville because you have to see the mountains 
And um, it used to be that we would come over here on the last Wednesday of each month so we could have fried chicken and sweet tea in the cafeteria. So, yeah. But <laughs> but here we're, now I think we're here either more often or, or not. But um, <clears throat> the graduate school is located near downtown Greer. So uh, we're really just within a stone's throw. Uh, one of the most thriving communities, I would say, in, the, in upstate South Carolina. So um, it, again, it's just 25 minutes down the road. And that is where the administration for the graduate school programs, admissions, as well as the associate deans and programs directors um, are housed. In the Temperature Campus, and that's the name of it, I write it up on the board. <laughs> We offer classes, Tim Brazier, and the Brazier family has been very loving and generous toward NGU over the past many years. And so uh, we're very grateful to them for the way that they partnered with North Greenville University to help us to have the facilities and the scholarships and things that we'll talk about today as well. Uh, but the Tim Brazier campus is where we're located. And when you go to the Tim Ranger campus, you have an upstairs and then you have a downstairs, which is where the physician assistance program is housed. So it's, um, it's actually, we actually have a lot of activity going on in Greer. With the graduate school, we have several areas of interest. Um, not only do we offer business type degrees, but we offer degrees in Christian ministry as well as education. And, you can actually go all the way up to a doctorate with us. We've had students who've attended here as a bachelor's degree student in Tigerville, who attended online with us, or perhaps on ground in Greer, as a master's degree student, and they decided that they'll go for the terminal degree. Well, we won't talk too much about the doctoral degree, but today, um, I can tell you a little bit about that, but. Consider this, that North Greenville has a career path for you uh, when you are talking about achieving your personal goals and professional goals. Uh, we, again, work with our students all the way up to the doctoral level. I'm actually a doctor of ministry student here. Um, I won't talk too much about my doctoral journey because it's very unusual and um, I'm looking forward to pushing forward to earn that degree. But, <laughs> just to kind of give you an overview of the types of things that we offer. And then I mentioned earlier that we have some degree updates. Now I brought some information with me that talk about the organizational leadership degree and the human resource management degree. <clears throat> the Master of Business Administration, we don't have a new flyer for yet. So as soon as that's released, we'll be happy to um, distribute that. But we'll talk first about the let me see, let me pull up the, M, the MOL. Before we get to the MBA, we'll start off with the MOL. So I'll put that over here. MOL is the Master of Organizational Leadership. <clears throat> it's a 30 hour degree. What you'll find when you're looking at graduate degree hours, typically they're between 30 to 36. Sometimes you'll run into a program that's 48. We'll talk about our 48 hour program shortly. But the Master of Arts, I'm sorry, the Master of Organizational Leadership is a 30 hour master's degree. So it is a full master's degree. It's just a couple less courses than you may take with other degrees. To tell you a little bit about that, um, the courses that are part of the curriculum are HR management, of course, but also managing organizational behavior, uh, communication and conflict resolution. Boy, let me tell you, we need that in organizations very badly, as well as leading with ethics and integrity. That one kind of speaks for itself. Um, anytime you turn on the news, no doubt you hear about a leader or manager or someone within an organization, whether it's politically oriented or for profit or whatever, that has done something unethical. And we hear about this all the time. One of the ways that we try to address that as an institution is that we talk about what it means to be a Christian leader, also what it means to be an ethical leader. And it's not just about following the legalities, it's a higher standard. So we make sure that that's a focus of our program and that is central one of the three. Just as it is 
with your undergraduate degree here. <clears throat> Another part of this, which I think is really exciting, is project management. There is a project management course that's um, integrated into the MOL program. So it does give our students a little more option as far as, you know, if you want to explore that as a possible career route. Now, um, in talking with Dr. Briggs' classes before, I know that we've had several students who've done graduate assistantships, perhaps with athletics or a different area at the institution, which I highly encourage you to do. Uh, sometimes we encounter students that <clears throat> when they get into the MBA program, maybe the analytical mathematics side is not their hugest or biggest strength, if I could say that. And um, so the MOL may be a program that would be, I guess, a little more uh, in alignment, perhaps, with your areas of strength. If you, in talking about the MBA, which I'll do in just a moment, if you enjoy the quantitative side of classes, not just the people side, but also the, the mathematical side, the statistical side, the analytical side of um, your business classes, then you would probably really enjoy the MBA. Not everybody has that as their particular strength. So I think one of the reasons why the measure of organizational leadership was developed is to really kind of cater to students that perhaps they really want to focus on the human side of an organization and understanding, of course, that there is the fiscal side, but really focusing on the leadership component of that. So again, um, that is the 30 hour program that we offer for the organizational leadership degree. It is completely online, so that's really exciting. Um, what that means is that if you go to school and take classes full time, that you could actually finish that degree in a year. That is if you're full time enrolled. Uh, so that's really exciting because I think people want to take a degree, but they want to move forward. So I'll put up here 30 hours for the MOL. Next, I mentioned earlier about the Master of Business Administration. Of course, that's been one of our key programs at the Graduate School for a number of years. And with the Master of Business Administration, what you'll find is that we also have an HR component of that. Um, you can do the MBA with a focus on human resource management. And when you take that concentration, it's 12 additional hours. But I write this up on the board. The MBA <coughs> is 36 hours. And if you decide to do the HR concentration, it's 12 more hours for HRM. And again, part of my handwriting. <laughs> With the MBA program, we actually have an on ground. Uh, offering for that in Greer. As I mentioned, it's a 25 minute away campus from here. Um, but we also have it available online for students who wish to take it in that format. And then sometimes we have students who really want to take maybe some of the more challenging analytical classes in Greer and maybe do the rest of it online. You have that level of flexibility as well. And then for our international students who are required to have an on ground presence, so that they can have their um, international credentials. We actually offer the on-ground option for them so that they can attend here full-time as an international student. There's some uh, legalities and requirements there that the school is aligned with, alignment with. <clears throat> as far as the courses that are part of the MBA curriculum, you'll find that it does kind of mirror a bachelor's degree in business you have your economics, you have your marketing, your HR, of course, organizational leadership. The business analytics class is part of that as well. And actually, let me pull this back up. My computer decided to go to sleep. So I can tell you that they have updated the curriculum for that. And I will pull that up very quickly and go over that with you. Yeah. <clears throat> so you'll have managerial accounting. You, of course, have the ethics and integrity leading leadership class, uh, data-driven problem solving. So the analytical course has changed a little bit in its nature and scope. 
Um, we do require two prerequisites for the MBA, and I'll write this up on the board as well. And this is something to pay attention to no matter what graduate school program you're looking at. The two prereqs are accounting and statistics. So we do want you to have a B or better in those classes if you've already taken them with your curriculum. My assumption is that was a part of your undergraduate degree. They both are required. Accounting one and proper Accounting steps. One. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So as long as you scored a B or better in those classes, you would not have to retake them to be able to transition to the Master of Business Administration program. And, and let me just say, even yes. as we are doing the, the, you know, the Common Core rev, uh, revisions on campus, mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've made sure that both those remain in all of our business degrees. Excellent. To again, help afford the opportunity for kids to transfer down there. <clears throat> that is excellent to hear because um, <clears throat> for students like me who did music education in their undergraduate degree and didn't take a lick of business. When I decided I wanted to study management and business at the master's level, I had some work to do. <laughs> so you guys are good. As long as you make a beer better in those classes, uh, then certainly that would serve you very well and set you up for great success in the MBA program. As I mentioned, it is a 36 hour program if you take it without the HR concentration. We'll talk about the HR concentration shortly as we segue into the HRM degree. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> With the 36 hour program, uh, basically you can do it a little over a year, about 15 months to a year and a half, if you decide to attend as a full time student. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the possibility of graduate assistantships, or I'll just put up here GA for short. If you attend here as a graduate assistant, first of all, it does cover your tuition score. Uh, <laughs> so that's certainly something to consider pursuing, number one. Number two, I usually route students to either uh, Stuart Floyd in career services, or even to the athletics department to see what may be available there. Um, I don't have a comprehensive list of the GA programs that exist here at North Greenville, but I know that there are a lot of them. And uh, it does involve an interview process and we'll make sure that you're vetted and a good fit for what they're looking for. But again, that could be a, a fantastic way of covering tuition for your degree. And so with the MBA program, Two, I mentioned earlier about a project management course that has now been integrated into the MBA curriculum as well. So that's, that's a very positive change for our programs. And then of course, um, we have an entrepreneurship type course that's part of the MBA. The expectation is that if you have an MBA degree, that you understand a bit about entrepreneurship as well. You may decide one day that you want to own your own business. And so having a well-rounded background in all things, not just the people side of a business, but the fiscal side of running a business, it's gonna be very, very important for you. Um, so I feel like with the MBA, you do, do get a very well-rounded type of education with that to be able to own your own business one day, if that is something you wish to do. Um, also, for students who serve as graduate assistants and see themselves as being a coach at the intercollegiate level. Um, having a master's degree is going to help you get where you want to be. <laughs> so um, it's not just about a master of education with past students who have um, pursued that, but having a business background would be very helpful in, again, knowing how to manage your team, not just from a people perspective, but also from a fiscal perspective. Uh, I know I've covered a couple of degrees. Do you have any questions so far? So the normal MBA is, uh, is it 14, 16 months? Um, well, 15. Yeah. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about how our terms work. And I was just, so when you do that, when the HR is added on, is that another nine months? Uh, yeah. Months, whatever it gets at that point. Yeah. No, it's great. I'm glad you asked about that. 
The way that our terms work is a little different than what you're accustomed to in the undergraduate program. We actually have five terms a year. And I'll write that up here. We have five terms. And those are eight weeks in length. So just to give you kind of a, an example of how it works, we just started our spring one course of study at the beginning of January. We're um, close, let's see, I think we're at week five or week six of the eight week term at this point. <clears throat> our next eight weeks will begin March 7th. That'll be another <laughs> period of time. That'll be spring two. We offer courses of study in the summertime to help students kind of push through their degree. Um, sometimes students are accustomed to having a summer break uh, to work or go home or, you know, however they decide to spend that. And with the MBA program, it is considered to be an accelerated type program. So you would actually be attending each term, you know, one after the other. So we have the start in January that I mentioned, March, May. Is for the summer term is usually about mid-May and then we also have for fall one August and then October for fall two so to give you a scenario if you took the MOL course of study with 30 hours and you did the five terms say if you started in August or you can actually start in May too right after you graduate Sometimes students are ready to just plow right through, and sometimes oh, I need a breather. <laughs> you know, I'm not ready for grad school yet. We totally understand. You have options. It's a flexible program. But say if you did start in August, you would take your five terms with the, um, the 30 hours. So August, term one, two, three, four, five. So you would finish your degree um, with the MOL in the following July. So again, it would be about a year of study. The MBA, if you started this August, it would take you six terms, unless you did need to go back and take the prerequisites. In that case, <clears throat> if you scored less than a B in either accounting or statistics, you would need to go back and take those classes again. I know, bummer, but <laughs> we wanna make sure that you're well prepared and comfortable with going into those analytical classes, and that will best prepare you. It's really in your best interest. Um, but if you take the 36 hours, again, it's gonna be six terms. You would finish up like the following December if you started, and graduate the following December if you started this uh, coming August. And then with the MBA and the HR concentration, you can actually add 12 hours onto the core of the MBA, which again is 36 hours. You can add on the 12 hours to get the HR concentration. And we've had students in the past who've asked, well, why do I want to do both? I mean, that's a long time to be in school. Well, because an organization is made up of people and other, not just your human resources, but also your fiscal resources. So having an opportunity to be well-rounded with both is very helpful. One other, I guess, positive point about the HR concentration, and then we'll segue into the HRM degree, is that the curriculum is actually written by someone who is an internationally recognized HR professional. And what I mean by that is, in the world of HR, there's the SHRM, Term, uh, certified professional or senior certified professional certification. And he actually teaches courses to help people prepare for those exams. And it's actually worldwide. Um, his name is Dr. Ed Shermer, and he teaches for the SHRM organization. In the past, he wrote the exam questions for the SHRM exam which is a pretty big deal because you have to be very specially picked for that. He did it for a few years, and now from the other side of the street, he's teaching people how to plan and strategize to take the test to be successful. 
He understands it from the question writing perspective as well as the test taking perspective, which is huge. He actually works with HR professionals in Russia. Uh, he will have some that he works with this coming spring in Egypt, Brazil, Malaysia, India. So he's not just sought after highly here in the U.S. This is something that's a, it's a global footprint. And this is the person who teaches the classes and wrote the curriculum. He knows what he's doing. So um, I've actually known Dr. Sherbert for a little over 20 years and can certainly uh, vouch for his effectiveness in writing that curriculum. So to talk a little bit more about the HR side of things, we actually have an MHR degree, a Master of Human Resource Management degree, and I do have a flyer on that today. It is a full master's degree as well. Again, you can take a certain select courses to do the concentration with the MBA, or you can just focus on the HR part of the world. And the courses that are involved in the MHR, it again, it is a 30 hour program as well. So it can be done in a year. <clears throat> You'll be looking at work behavior, the ethics side, HR of course, but you'll also talk about human resources in a global context. And we really do exist in a global business environment, whether we recognize it or not. Um, it, it, even in subtle ways, when we go grocery shopping or shopping at Walmart or whatever it is that we're seeking, uh, we have numerous businesses that want to do business with us that have their products and services out there for us. It is truly a global business environment. Um, <clears throat> you do get into the analytics side of HR and the reason why that's important and added to the curriculum is when you are trying to optimize your human resources component of your organization, you want to keep track of things as uh, such as turnover rates or the length of time it takes to hire somebody to fill a position or the cost of advertising and hiring for a particular position. Uh, these are all things that impact the bottom line of an organization. So being an HR person is really about being a business person as well. You do have to understand the business side uh, and being able to look at a human resources dashboard and think about the different areas that you try to measure. You know, we often think about performance evaluations, for example, how do you measure certain things? Like if somebody's an ethical employee, how do you measure that? You learn different ways of evaluation in the MHR program. Um, you also learn a little bit about the intersection of HR and marketing, which is branding employment branding. This is something that we don't often think about <laughs> unless you're involved heavily in that field, but NGU has a brand, right? And <laughs> so, well, I'll just kind of put you guys on the spot. If you were to describe the NGU brand, how would you describe it? And you think of two or three words. If you were to describe the NGU brand, and the reason why that's important while you're percolating your thoughts <clears throat> is because if I'm a hiring person, a hiring manager for this institution, I need to understand what our brand is and how it's perceived in the public so that I can kind of align with that. That's a very strong point of alignment. You can talk to uh, a potential employee and you understand what your brand is and can communicate very well about that because the brand is strong meaning that you understand what your mission, vision, and goals are for the institution and are able to communicate with that with the potential employee and they get it and they see, I would really like to work for this organization. I get that, I get you guys. So talk about NGU's brand for just a second. What are some things that come to mind? Christ-centered. Say again? Christ-centered. There you go, perfect, good. Any other thoughts on NGU's brand? 
So see, it's important for me to, to know that as an employee here, hiring someone from the outside, because we want to make sure that people who work here at the institution understand our Christ-centeredness. And so that really kind of informs the conversation of the interview and it, the, the vetting process of bringing someone on board. They need to understand that we are a Christ-centered institution and that informs who we are and shapes who we are as an institution. It's our brand, okay? So yeah, it's an important part of the conversation there. Um, leadership theory and development, as well as the communication and conflict resolution. Yes. Can I speak to the brand for a minute? Yes. Or did you already go past that? No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just as somebody who's been here a couple decades. Yes. Um, I think of private education as a uh, more uh, comprehensive. Um, I, when I think of private education, having worked in higher ed for a decade now, um, private education is, I don't want to use the word better, so I'm going to use the word more comprehensive um, geared toward the individual. So I know our sport programming here uh, is very, um, is a very strong program because we went through all that accreditation stuff. And by doing that, it forced us to raise our standards to match the highest standards in the industry. So what we do uh, is, is probably more um, rigorous and comprehensive in our sport program than probably 99% of the sports program, sport education programs around the country. There's 200 sport education programs in North America and there's only about 34, 35 of us that are accredited, which yeah. means we maintain the highest standards and we do so on a regular basis. So I know that internally. Sometimes it's hard to communicate that externally, but I know from a branding perspective, uh, I wish we could communicate that better and, and that falls on us on the inside, but, but a very rigorous, comprehensive and I also agree, our private educational brand, I view us as regional and also evangelical. Yes. So I think of words like evangelical, comprehensive, and regional, all of which are very good things. Well, I like that too. Um, you're talking about the comprehensive side of that. I think um, one of the, and I've been in Christian higher education really for the better part of 25 years at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, so I look young, but I'm just kidding. No, um, I started working in Christian higher education right after I graduated from my undergraduate degree in 1995. <clears throat> and um, so <laughs> I think the thing that, I, that really stands out to me here, having worked in other Christian institutions is that um, you know, you really have an opportunity to learn the best of both worlds. You learn about the theory side. You, you know, the theory that you learn here is the theory you would learn at Clemson University or at the top tier schools when it comes to research institutions. But you have an opportunity to explore and really grapple with your Christian faith as you discuss those theories. It's not just about dry theories that you would find in a textbook. You can read those anywhere, right? But you have an opportunity to marry up, I guess, looking at theory through a Christian worldview, through a lens, so that you can see, yes, this is why we have theories. We try to explain the phenomenon that we encounter every day as human beings, but we approach it from a Christian perspective in that we can see that there are right ways and wrong ways of applying that theory, and that we do, of course, operate at a higher standard. So to me, Christian higher education is really the best of both worlds. You get the theory, which is why you want to go um, study, part of the reason why you want to go study, but you approach it from the right perspective. So <clears throat> as far as a branding standpoint, I think that's a very strong statement, but all right. Uh, thank you um, for sharing about that. So I've covered the degree programs. We'll talk a little bit about the admissions process. You mentioned earlier about the GRE or the MAT or the GMAT. We actually don't require those exams. So I'll put this up on the board with glee. GRE, mark for it. <laughs> we, uh, we don't require that. Um, 
part of the reason why is because we look at your undergraduate degree work. As long as you have at least a 2.5 GPA, I took it right over the board, so I apologize, but as long as you have at least a 2.5 GPA in your undergraduate degree, that tells us about your readiness to approach and to be successful with graduate degree study at North Carolina University. So that's one thing you can kind of cross off the list. We don't require that. Also, we do require the application. If you go to ngu.edu, that's our website. Then you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, to the right, you'll see that there is an apply now button and you click on that. And what you do is you set up your profile first and then you go in and apply. So it's a two-step process. You set up your profile, you receive an email confirmation of that, and then you use that to log back in and to complete everything. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we do have five terms a year. So when you're filling out the application, you should see all five terms, August, October, January, March, and May. So you would select the one that's most appropriate for you. Also, in the process, you typically <laughs> um, would be providing all of your transcripts. But since you're North Greenville University students, we have access to your transcripts. Uh, so we can actually pull those for you. So that's one less step for you. You don't have to worry about ordering transcripts for your graduate school application we can download those for you. So it saves you a little bit of money uh, and a little bit of time and aggravation. <laughs> but what we do require, in addition to the application itself, let me move this over, you have three references. This is pretty standard for graduate school. You may or may not have had to complete, or maybe you had one reference or whatever for your undergrad. At the graduate level, because it is a step up, and we're doing a, a lot of research, a lot of writing. Uh, we want to make sure that you have references who know you from a professional perspective as well as a personal perspective and say, hey, yeah, this guy's going to be great. He's going to be a great graduate student for you all. Um, <clears throat> so we have that as part of your application process. But not to worry, you can actually send out an email request to your references through the application. And what happens is you complete the application, you'll see that there is a status page for you. So you can keep track of who's been naughty and who's been nice in terms of whether they've turned in your reference for you or not. Um, a little bit about references. You do um, have two professional and one personal. Um, we caution students against using a family member as a personal reference unless you work for this individual, maybe they own their own business, if it's your uncle or you know, a grandparent or even a parent that own their own business and you work for them and they can speak to you uh, or speak about you from a business as well as a personal perspective, that would work. You know, because that's, that's true work experience for you. Uh, but otherwise, we uh, request that students utilize personal references of someone that's maybe a friend of the family or a colleague or um, you know someone that's known you for a long time that's not closely related to you and then there's an essay <clears throat> nothing to be too stressed out about here Oops, I'm making a mess an essay which is 500 words the topic for the essay is why I'm going to graduate school at North Carolina University. Uh, <laughs> we want you to kind of share your thoughts with us about what it is that's driving you to pursue graduate degree work at North Greenville. Um, whether you are here as a graduate assistant or uh, because of COVID, we've had a lot of students who've returned as student athletes who have an extra year of eligibility. And so that's where you have an opportunity to share with us about what your career goals are, about how you'll be attending here as a GA, as an student athlete, however it is that you'll be approaching it. And so you'll wanna be sure that for the essay with 500 words, remember that it is a writing sample. 
is for us to get an idea of how well you write. Um, as I mentioned, for graduate school, you do a bit of writing. Especially if you take classes online, your discussions are typed. You know, you, you have discussions where you go into Blackboard and you have a discussion board that you post to. You also respond to your fellow students. And really the expectation is that you would approach those discussions from a professional perspective. You wanna make sure your grammar is all set and that sort of thing. So this gives us kind of a, a preview. Um, of course, it is a short written piece, but it's something that's doable. So we have those requirements for the application process. I am actually, yours truly, will be the one who reviews your file for admissions. And then we kind of move forward from there. We talk about start date, we talk about getting your classes set up. Not to breeze through financial aid, however, uh, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. If you are perhaps going straight to work after you graduate, one thing that I request or I guess recommend to students is that when you're going and interviewing for organizations, do a little bit of research. Of course, this is a best practice. Do research before you go in and talk to people. They um, have an expectation that you know a little bit about them <laughs> before you darken the door for an interview. And if you go in there seeming like you're kind of clueless about what they do, um, that does not put forth a good first impression. And you have one chance to have a good first impression. But I would say, do your research and see which organizations offer any type of tuition reimbursement or tuition remission um, benefits, or like a direct bill where the school would actually send the bill to your employer and you would not have to pay for that tuition. Uh, it's certainly something that I recommend and I have certainly taken advantage of in the past myself with various institutions. Uh, it's a great way to make sure that your finances are covered for your education. I mentioned earlier about graduate assistantships here at the university and how to approach those. I definitely encourage you to look into that, start the uh, application interview process sooner rather than later. Uh, if you're a, a student athlete and you have additional eligibility, don't pass that opportunity by. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way for you to continue your athletic career at the university, but also get an advanced degree. One of the reasons why I would say that it's important to have an advanced degree, especially in today's global business environment, is because there's a lot of competition for the jobs that exist out there. Um, COVID has kind of thrown a wrench into things when it comes to uh, job availability as well as willingness or availability for people to work, that sort of thing. So you may find that even in, today, in today's situation, you may find you have an opportunity to even work remotely. And having the master's degree and being able to share that with a future employer, again, it's part of your own personal branding statement. You've prepared well to go into the workforce um, it tells them a lot about your character and your preparedness, really. So those are just two small reasons <laughs> that, uh, that I share about graduate school. But also with financial aid, I do recommend completing the FAFSA, which is F-A-F-S-A, the FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. No doubt you've had to apply for that in the past. Graduate financial aid is a little different than undergraduate financial aid, meaning that at the bachelor's level, yes, okay, I'll speed it up. Uh, at the bachelor's level, you have uh, grants such as PAL, if you are eligible for that, or South Carolina Tuition Grant, or Life Scholarship, I mean, there's different things. At the graduate level, it's basically in the form of loans. We do have what's called the Brazier Scholarship, and I'll put that up here on the board. Brazier, I mentioned the Braziers earlier. Again, they have been very generous with our institution and believe in our students. And so they have a the Brazier Graduate Scholarship. 
Now, if you are a student athlete, my understanding is that student athletes or GAs uh, are no longer eligible for the scholarship. This was something that I heard maybe a month ago. <laughs> so it was news to me at the time. But I would still recommend looking into it. I mean, especially if you are maybe transitioning and not being a GA here, you know, you're working elsewhere or whatever. I definitely recommend applying for it just to see. Um, it, the way that it works is out of your first four classes, courses, it covers one credit hour out of each credit hour, which means that four credit hours are covered by the scholarship. It's enough to help you get started in grad school, which sometimes getting kick started is what it takes. <laughs> and then of course, we also have payment plans for students. If you've ever had to utilize one of those before, it is a way for you to not incur financial aid debt, but to be able to pay for it as you go along. So um, those are usually pretty helpful for students as well. So as far as the deadlines, if you're looking to potentially start graduate school here with us in the fall, sooner rather than later is always good. The fact that you haven't graduated yet doesn't mean you can't apply for grad school now especially if you're looking to come in May or August. Um, so I would say sooner is better. And we do have uh, financial aid counselors who will walk with you through the process. One thing I did not cover at all, and I promise I'll make this very swift, the cost per credit hour for the fall, I believe is 510 per credit hour. You also have an $85 tech fee per term, five terms a year, that's 85 times five, <laughs> to let you know how much it would cost in a year. Uh, we also use the Slingshot textbook service. You can opt out of it if you decide to do it. I think it's about $30 per credit hour for the textbooks. So that's why we talk about financial aid pretty heavily. And if you can find a way to have your tuition covered, that's really gonna help you out in the long run. All right, any, uh, any questions? <laughs> when is the best time to begin to apply? As we're graduating and we're thinking of our grad school summer or fall, uh, when should we start applying? And putting uh, our stuff now, together? you can do it now. What, what that means is that we can go ahead and make a provisional decision on your, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on your acceptance for the MBA or the MOL or the MHR uh, once you've graduated and it shows you as being graduated on your transcript and then we just have to follow up on that on our end. But that's not anything you have to necessarily be concerned about. Just make sure you graduate, which I know you're ready. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So what you could do is you can even apply now for either the May term or the August term. It's it's not too early at all. Your application stays fresh for a year. So say you want to come back, but you're not ready for this August, but you've applied. Your application will stay fresh with us for a year. Um, good questions. Any other questions that you guys may have? The application fee, is it waived for no fee. For NGU students. Okay. Well, it, there's no fee okay. at all for anybody. So is there any reason why we shouldn't apply? <laughs> because there's no fee, right? There's no fee. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and you don't have to pay for transcripts. So there you go. Saves you some uh, funding up front. I know other grad schools, you may find they charge anywhere from $50 mm -hmm. or higher just to apply. And then you don't know for sure if you get into the program or not. Um, here we make a, a very quick decision. We have, we have, once we have all your documents in, we can uh, make a decision very quickly. Perfect. We're running short on time and there's another class behind us. Ah. Any questions? Um, I did bring some information as well as some yes. of cards there. So uh, I make a great pen pal and I won't bug you. Yes. <laughs> LinkedIn. 